and it gets great viewing figures. We've, uh, I think the first one I did was about 14, 13, 14 years ago, and it's, and it's worked, and it's been brilliant. We've revived it, and uh, I think it's been really well received, and this is a cracker of a card. Every fight on here is a competitive fight, it's a good fight, and meaningful for the fighters, because, or certainly will be for the winners, because they'll put themselves in contention in 2025 for some major, major fights and paydays. Definitely, Frank, excellent main event. I mean, Brad Moore's Denzel Bentley. Two guys that you've backed, Brad Moore recently, but a huge fight with world title implications, like you said. Yeah, we've given them... Okay, it'll be also for, we hope, we, we to get rubber stamps for the vacant European. And then uh, I've added the spice to it by saying the winner will get a world title fight next year, which I will deliver. And uh, this is uh, two heavyweight fights on, on this card, um, obviously the big one at the end of December as well. Is the heavyweight bo boxing division the best division in boxing or certainly the best one for Queensbury at the moment? It's one of them. It's, uh, certainly we're very strong in that department as we are with, uh, in, in other areas, uh, other weight divisions. But it's a sexy division, there's no doubt about it, and there's two brilliant heavyweight fights on there. As well. Sam Noakes on the card, I mean, I'm just talking to him there. From December to December, that's five fights. I mean, surely he's a shoe in for Fighter of the Year this year. Well, he's certainly, he's well up there, isn't he? I mean, but you look at a lot of our guys on the rush for what they've done this year. They've been, they've been in exciting fights and meaningful for fights and won them. But, you know, Sam is very important to us. You know, we love him dearly. And he's, and he's my son manages him, done a great job. Alan's a big friend of mine who trains him, Alan Smith. It's a, you know, for us, it's a pleasure and we'll do all we can to keep him moving. But, you know, again, he's in a tough fight. A very experienced fighter who fancies the job and uh, it'd be interesting. But Sam's got a record with, I think, 93% of his fights he's won by KO. And he's in with a guy who's never been stopped. So, Frank, obviously the big news this week coming out of Queensbury, um, big deal with DAZN. Obviously, you've, you've been with a lot of different broadcasters throughout your career. I was wondering, throughout your long career as a promoter, what, who are the, your top three fighters that you've, you've promoted? Uh, it's it's going to be a tough one. That is a very <laughs> tough one. You know what, I, I, I got asked something like that the other day. I find it very difficult. You know, I look at Tyson, look what he's done and where he's come from, the problems he's had. I can look at Naz, Joe Calzaki, Frank Bruno fighting for the world title three times and not doing it and then came with me and won it in his fourth one. Um, oh, I mean, it's just so many. Ricky Hatton, Steve Collins, Nigel Bear. I mean, it goes on and on and on. It is, it's a very, very difficult question to answer. So I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> And uh, next weekend, Frank, there's a, a certain fight that, that some boxing fans are like, some won't. But on the undercard of that, Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor. Is that a fight that yourself and Chantal are going to be keeping an eye on? Absolutely. Or the main event as Absolutely. well, possibly? Absolutely. It's a great fight. And hopefully we can make the main, win, main event. She boxed brilliantly last week. I didn't get a chance to talk to her after the fight, but she really did extremely well. Have you got a thought on Mike Tyson getting back in the ring as well at all? I don't like the idea of 58-year-old men fighting. Uh, but uh, but I'm a, I'm a, I, I like... Jake Paul and Nikita, he's, who works with him, they're really two really good guys. Um, they've done brilliantly. They're good promoters. Um, and if somebody wants to fight and they're getting licensed, me, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with a 58 guy, year old guy, but obviously they do and they've licensed him and it's properly supervised. Who knows? It's, uh, you know, it's the mad, sometimes I call it the mad world we, we live in. But look, you know, they're. It's going to do big business, there's no doubt about that, and a lot of people will watch it, including me. I'll do the same thing, because it's like a car crash, isn't it? Slow down and you look at it, and that's what happens. Obviously, Lawrence Coley, one of the, one of the signers, heavyweight division, very stacked. Who are some of the names that you fancy uh, throwing in with Lawrence Coley in the next year, year and a half? He's got a tough fight to come through for us. This guy, as you heard him, he's not come out to make up the numbers. He fancies the job, and he's a... Uh, I mean, he seems to think he's going to knock him over by the sounds of it. He's got a good record. Um, we will see. If he comes through that fight, then for me, there are he could fight anybody who's in that top that top ten. It's going to be interesting to see. Can he do what David Hay did? Can he do what Usyk did? Being a former world champion, come up and do it heavyweight. It's going to be interesting. He's a, I didn't realise how big he is. The first time I've really spoken, he's a big, big guy. I don't know how he made cruiserweight. And obviously. obviously 
everyone, everyone talks about how stacked the heavyweight division, your heavyweight roster is. Is that something that you look for? Are you just always trying to find the best heavyweight, or has it just been a coincidence that it just happened? It's like something we, we invested in. We invested in Daniel Dubois as a sponsored him as a young man, done the same with Moses, you know, Tyson came with us um, on his comeback, uh, I, mean, I did promote him a couple of times before that, on his comeback he came with us, uh, a lot of these guys, David Adelaide come, came with us, um, all of them started out their journey, for example, Lawrence, Lawrence Acoli's come out, come as a heavyweight with us, and they do it because they know we're good at what we do. We give them the opportunity, and it's such a lively division now. And certainly as far as the Brits are concerned, I mean, we're blessed with her, you Absolutely blessed. I'll go back to the day when you couldn't, where, where, where no British heavyweight had won a world title for nearly 100 years. Modern, modern day boxing is uh, really starting to boom now. How do you compare it to when you first started promoting and sort of in the last few decades? Would you say we're sort of seeing a golden, a golden era now? I started promoting in the 70s, okay, so I'm into what now, my fifth decade, and the end of the day, it's not change, because all people want to see is good fights, that's what it's about. What has changed is how they watch them, how they consume them, from being on terrestrial TV, there was only one channel when I started out showing boxing, that was BBC television, ITV showed fights from overseas, we got them involved, all those fights in those early days were all recorded on a Tuesday night and shown on a Wednesday 24 hour delay. There was no live boxing. I did the first live boxing shows on a regular basis. That's a fight to get them on, that, that's a, through legal action. Um, fights, we put them on on Saturday nights. There were no shows on Saturday nights. They were always midweek. Venues were all tied up. And seeing it go through from fights being on Close circuit where you'd pay 20 quid, 25 quid to go in the West End, four or five and a clock in the morning to watch fights coming from America to see it on pay per view in the UK. I've done the first pay per view show and all the different channels that evolved from there, you know, the satellite broadcasters. Um, and, where, and here we are today coming to the end of our deal with TNT and off to a, yet another broadcaster, which is going to be a massive, massive challenge for us and one we're really looking forward to to working with them because you know I look at the people who are involved at the, at the top echelons all the people that they brought in at the zone um, they're really good people really good people they've changed a lot of their personnel over the last couple of years and we got good rapport with them we've worked with some of them in the past on a regular basis and I met with their with the uh, their finance the guy who finances all in Salem Black and Vic who's a great great guy got great vision and convince us this is where we should be going. This is where we are, where we're going.